making this video to make sure to tell you guys in a nutshell, sort of long video kind of way, how uh, the whole training timeline goes. So as you guys know, I'm a cross trainer from air transportation into medevac so 2 t 2 into 4MX1. There's two types of uh, medevac. Um, you have the reservists and you have the active duty, obviously. There's 31 bases that have medevac in which I think about five, don't quote me on that, but I think it's about five of them are active duty and then all the other ones are reserves. So I started my training in June 2017. We are almost November 2018 and then now finally I am almost done with it and I'm fully qualified on the job. Both active duty and reserves um, have to go through the 4N school to become a um, medical um, technician. So it's a 4NO school. And that takes 170 days, where three months are basically just for classroom stuff, three segments. Uh, you're gonna have nursing, you have an REMT, and then you have Air Force specifics. You need to actually pass the National Registry for EMT. And if you don't, you will be retrained into another career field. Both active duty and reserves will go through this school to become technicians. And then that's where things get different. For active duty, once you finish the 4N school, you will go back to your hospital or med group because to become a medevac on active duty for technicians, you need to first fulfill time in service. I think it's about maybe three to four years or I don't know, you, you have to ask um, when you become a foreign and go to your uh, clinic how long it is that you can shred out into medevac. But I'm pretty sure that you need to do some sort of like time in service as a technician before you can shred out from active duty. Now, as a reservist, you will right away just be assigned to an AE unit and you will be medevac by the end of the training. For the reserves, this is just the first part. You will do your three months of the classrooms. You'll get your NREMT. Once you pass that, uh, you're going to go to phase two which active duty also goes to phase two. So this, this 4N school is the same for active and reserves. The phase two for this schooling is just hands-on. You're going to go to one of the hospitals that they will send you, and then you will be there for about six, six weeks, I want to say, and do the job. All of the EMT stuff, um, you know, vaccines and IVs and all that stuff. So you can get you know, used to actually doing it on people. And that's the first schooling. So it's 170 days for 4N. And then you got to get out of there with an REMT and a CPR uh, certification. Okay, the lighting was crazy. After 4N, again, active duty goes their way. Reserves will keep going. Then you're going to go to survival training. So survival evasion, resistance, and escape. The infamous seer. Uh, that's 24 days, and then you do water survival, which is two days. So they both are in the same location, so you're going to be there for about 26 to 28 days, depending on the scheduling. For us reservists, it does happen that because some trainings can wash you out, if you don't get the NREMT, for instance, uh, you have to get retrained to another uh, career field or go back to your old career field. So they tend not to schedule you right away for SEER until they know that you're graduating your first schooling. You can be prepared to have some sort of breaking training, but depending on funding of the unit, they will try to keep you on a breaking training set of orders so you don't have to go back to your civilian job and then get like that whiplash of, oh, I'm back, oh, I'm leaving again, and all that stuff to diminish any kind of stress with your civilian job, uh, there will be a sort of uh, breaking training orders in between um, these trainings. After water survival and SEER, you will go to ATFN and FTU, which is the flight school. It's also divided into two uh, phases. ATFN is basically like clinicals and getting to know the equipment. That you're going to be flying with and then FTU is more like actually what are you going to be doing 
So you're going to have the learning experience of how to find regulations that you need to be aware of and checklists and all that stuff to make sure that you can fly with your patients safely. Or you're going to learn all about the equipment on the first phase, which is a AT and FN. You're going to have all of the medics, um, the technicians, and you're going to have the flight nurses there as well. As well as an FTU, everybody just kind of moves together. It's just one school in the same location. And then in the end of FTU, you will do your check ride so you can get out of there qualified to go back to your unit and start working. Uh, FTU, AT is about 78 days. And then you'll go back to your unit and then you start MQT, which is Mission Qualification Training. Even though you're qualified through the schooling, your unit still will do um, exercises with you for that time so you can qualify as well with the unit. So at this point, I am qualified because I've, I'm have i like about to finish my orders in, in less than a month. So I've done everything. That's why it took so long to do this video. But the MQT, which is the mission qualification training or on the job training, can be as little as 60, 90 days, depending on funding up to 140 days, depending on funding as well. I'm not sure if there could be more time, but it's it. you could expect that it's going to be a long time, like about 140, 100 and some days, because they need to do a lot. And during that time, you'll be flying with your unit. You're going to be actually doing the job that you learn in FTU and AT just with your unit and, and, and doing the same kind of training that you've been doing all this time. Here I am back to another room. Some things to keep in mind is when you finish FTU and MQT, you will still have to keep your currency. So once you finish training, it's not over really. Um, there's minimal requirements that you need to keep up to so you can keep flying with the unit. Uh, some of those are like, you need to fly at least once every quarter. You need to do certain medical training. You need to not let your national registry or VMTs expire, nor your CPR card. So if you are a civilian that has a very demanding job and you're thinking about going to this career field, take that in consideration because you do have a whole lot that you still got to keep up with after you're done with all of the training and then you're going to have to keep up with with your you know regular civilian career and flying whenever possible and all that stuff so keep in mind that this career field is very rewarding it's very fun you fly a lot you go to places but you still have a lot of work to do as far as keeping up your currencies. For people who are thinking on not flying and just doing 4N, the training is only the very first schooling, 4N0, 170 days, the NREMT and all that stuff. And then when you go back to your unit, you will be doing as little as 30, as long as 90 days of on-the-job training. And that's for reserves. Active duty, you just go to your unit and you'll be there and you will work. That's basically for active duty, how it goes. As far as active duty for flyers, same thing. You're gonna go through all this training that I just described, and instead of going through MQT like the reservists do, you're just going to go to your unit, and then you're just gonna start working and get deployed and do all that fun stuff. Because the point of all the job training for reservists is because after all this training is done, we do go back to uh, civilian lives, so we need that extra uh, on-the-job thing going on so we can have some more hands-on. It's not the case for active duty. Once you shred out in, into AE, you're just going to go to your new unit and you're just going to work and get deployed and do all that fun stuff. As a summary, first school, it's the med tech school. So it's 4N, 170 days. Then you go to Seer and Water Survival. Uh, it's 26 days. ATFN flight school is 78 days. And then if you're a reservist, MQT, which is mission qualification training, is 140 days. But that can depend on your unit and funding, how long they're going to give you. Where active duty is going to be the same thing after you do your time on your clinic or whatever. You're just going to go to CEO or survive or FTU, and then you're just going to go to your new flying unit. And then that's that. Let me know if you guys have any more questions. I hope this helped for a timeline. And then again, keep in mind, seriously keep in mind the fact that once you're done with the training, you still got to keep up with your currencies and, and all of that. 
So it's it's going to be a second job, really. It's not going to be a weekend warrior thing that people like to say about reservists because this job requires a whole lot of currencies. I love it. It's really cool. I really like this job. So I hope I helped out. If you have any questions, post it on the comments. When I can, I will answer. Bye. Thank you.